So this will be used for mainly cancer research and clinical diagnostics and everything with P go into the environment, yeah? And it will show up in wastewater and all sort of thing and it will go into the plants and so forth. So that's what we are interested in here. And um, this is an engineered and functional cartoon of that, for example, and I'll discuss more about what uh, the particles that we are using. You have the gold center uh, and then you have, a, you can have a hook up a peptide one uh, to change the surface properties. It's just the idea. All right. And then uh, if you do, uh, you can control morphology uh, with gold nanoparticle and size dispersion. It has optical and ele uh, special electronic properties. Easy, uh, one of the things is easy to f uh, functionalize surface properties. Yeah, plus negative. Uh, you see shortly, and also it has a fairly good stability over the uh, over, over the time, and also biocompatible, very biocompatible. And you'll see how they make these things. We don't make it; my colleagues make these things, synthesize, uh, and I'll, I'll discuss shortly. And then uh, these particles are around one to hundred, and ones that we are using are very even less, about twenty nanom. Um, uh, nanometer particle, uh, and also gold has a no physiological function, no physiological function, uh, non physiological function. Uh, so you don't get the, these things. Uh, you get very low background in plants or animals. So it's a very good signal to noise ratio is very high, and AUMP does not easily dissociate to its ionic form. This is a problem. Sometimes these gold nanoparticles or nanoparticles, metal nanoparticles, can dissociate in the in the cells. Then it's not a nanoparticle anymore. You know the property is completely changed. Yeah, this is the problem. Uh, but these things are good for that kind of studies and very difficult to get that oxidation state under normal conditions. And gold and enter into tissue are not broken down, inevitably exit the organism and enter into the environment, therefore, because it's not degrading. And so, this is an excellent uh, tool for study fate and transport properties of the nanoparticles and bioavailability in the environment. Yeah, so that's a that's what we started to look at these things. So uh, these things are made by uh, uh, Vincent Rotella group uh, in University of Massachusetts. They synthesize, they are the experts on these things. Uh, now they are very good chemists, synthesis chemists on this, well, this thing. And uh, you, uh, here is the gold center. And here you have, uh, uh, you derivatize with sulfur. Uh, you can hook it up by li ligand bonding, and then you have CH2, 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 long chain group. Uh, that is to increase the stability, yeah, aliphatic groups. Yeah, it's ba basically a chain of carbon hydrogen. And then the trick is to, you have to deliver these things into the tissue, so you have to polarize the thing, yeah? Yeah, so you, what you do, they do is they put uh, oxygen, like ether groups all uh, ether groups, yeah? And then you can, biocompatible, you can send it now, yeah? And so you can deliver it. And then you want to interact with these things with the cell, then you want to put a charge group, either positive, negative, or keep it neutral, right? So this is what engineering part in, well, that's pretty nice, cool stuff, yeah? So in order to do these things properly, and you have to think about the stability, otherwise it will break, Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> and also, it should be biocompatible, so you need to have uh, some polar group. And also, oxygen is a great one, and um, and all groups. And then you have, you can put a quaternary amine, so you get a positive group, yeah. And you can have a, a C double OH group, so you can get a negative charge, yeah. And then you can have a neutral molecule like OH group, alcohol group, or something like that. You hook it up, yeah? So then you can completely change the molecule uh, situation. And then you have in the, in the center, you have a gold 
nanoparticles. So we hereafter I'm going to call AUNP1 for positive charge, 1 for positive, uh, 2, 0 charge, yeah, and 3 for negative charge. Yeah, this is another molecule, but we're using AUNP1 positive, 2, 0 neutral, and 3 negative, yeah. So three particles that we are working on it, and a UNP one, two, three uh, with a search, uh, with a charge surface. So you can look at more information on this uh, by Shu et al. Uh, uh, in Small magazine. Yeah, his name is Small. <laughs> Have you heard about this journal? It's a good journal. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then. Then you, the motivation here is to develop the method to detect gold nanoparticles in plant tissue using laser ablation ICPMS. And the second motivation is to elucidate the spatial distribution of AUNP in plant tissue. That was my first study. Just look at things uh, surface, yeah, like on the sugar loaf mountain and looking at the landscape, yeah. Or Sunday afternoon you are going on a chopper looking at the <laughs> Valley of San Carlos, huh? yeah. So that's the imagination, right? And and you can you have to consider as analytical chemist uh, several things. This is great. You have a monoisotopic gold, one ninety seven. There's nothing, hundred percent. There's a trouble as well. If there's interferences, as you know, there's no <laughs> no other isotope, right? But it's also good, it's, you get a good juicy, juicy signal, yeah? Very strong signal, yeah? And then you get, a, therefore, you get a signal, high signal to uh, noise ratios. Uh, therefore, it should be easy to detect. And also, there's no uh, known physiological function in gold, so the backgrounds are low as well. Yeah, everybody's okay so far? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Um, so, as I said, uh, orisa sativa, uh, the Latin word for this uh, go, uh, rice, and uh, it's a main staple food. And then, um, so we we grow these uh, plants hydroponically, so we can do at the control conditions, yeah, and not under real environmental conditions that we are using here. And then we harvest uh, the there's no root parts here. Looking at the roots grow in the gold nanoparticle solution one, two, three, and then we harvest these first couple of leaves coming up, yeah? Uh, that's the idea behind it, yeah. So in this case, uh, what we have done is we grew, grew rice plants hydroponically, my colleague's lab uh, in uh, um, soil science plants, and we use environmentally relevant gold Concentration, environmentally relevant ones. I can, we can put 100 milligrams per liter, then it's not environmentally relevant, yeah? So you need to have environmentally relevant and then even, even environmentally relevant for a long term experiment, about more than uh, about three months. This one is about seven days experiment. And one, then we also grow without adding gold, no, um, gold particles, AUNP. And then we have using three uh, types of gold nanoparticle, positively charged, neutral, and negatively charged, and it's the same thing I mentioned a moment, moment ago. And then after that, we harvest roots and shoots of these plants for our analysis. Uh, uh, they are grown for about five days and three months. Uh, that's a long-term experiment. And the five-day experiment is uh, short-term experiment, so I will call short-term and long-term. That means about a week, or close to close to a week, five days experiment, and long-term experiment is about three months, uh, with uh, with 0.14 grams of gold, gold, gold. This is a pure gold per liter, yeah, uh, uh, material. And, and um, so when we go grow in hydroponically, we put uh, uh, the long-term experiment, uh, some nutrient solutions, uh, Hoagland solution, and then we harvest it and we, we AR dry them uh, on a Petri dish, and then we take, this is a picture of a uh, mounted, uh, uh, one of the shoots 
from the rice, and then we lay over on a 3M tape, you know, 3M tape, uh, and turn out to be it has very low background uh, on these things, yeah. And so we just uh, put it on there. Not my sample preparation so far, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then uh, we use, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know this thing, and then uh, we use inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, you know, as you know very well, you know, this group. Um, uh, you have three major areas. You have always sample introduction system, and you have to prepare samples, in many cases, um, solution-based work. Uh, Joka knows many of that, yeah? And then you can see in any instruments of this nature, you can have an excitation source, yeah? Excite you have to have an excitation source. Uh, even if you use visible spectroscopy, you have an excitation source, yeah? All these things have excitation source. And then you have to have a specific detector, in this case, mass to charge de detector. It's basically, uh, it's not a spectrometry, but it's, it's not a spectrometry, right? You have nothing to do with wavelength and stuff like that. But you, you, you are b basically selecting mass, masses, you know, from little masses to very high masses. Basically, mass spectrometry does that one. Uh, so it's a mass to charge ratio. Uh, ideally, we want to keep this charge as a plus, so you want to get an M plus sign. Uh, so you can tune the system to get a right condition to get a Z is equal to 1. So you have a mass is equal to mass to charge ratio, right? So the laser ablation is another solid sample introduction method, nothing more. Yeah, nothing more fancy about it. Uh, basically, you, uh, you will see later on a tiny ablated sample is swept by um, argon or argon uh, helium mixture or argon nitrogen helium mixture, any of that, uh, and put it, pass it to the uh, excitation source. Yeah. So as, the, as you know, the ICP MS is a very sensitive elemental detector. Very sensitive. You know, you can go to parts a billion and level, and it's a wonderful technique. We know for sure, and it's a mass to charge uh, detector. Yeah. And in this case, the, our sample introduction system is laser ablation, solid sampling method. Uh, we use uh, NWR213 laser, deep, deep UV uh, laser ablation system. It's a fairly new system. Uh, they put it about two, three years ago. I think I was the first one to uh, use this one. Uh, I mean, they put it up uh, uh, on uh, this particular one. And high high performance neodymium laser, and then you take the 15th harmonic to get 213 micrometer, uh, with a pulse duration about four microseconds. Yeah, and this is the new version of 213. Uh, it has upgraded software for uh, image uh, manipulation, and uh, in this particular cell is very good. Uh, the earlier 213 cell was get diluted signal is the very long tail, you know, a lot of memory effect. This one is a very thin uh, cell, uh, you get a rising signal and then go quickly. I like that. Uh, <laughs> so you don't have memory effects and, you know, you have tail ends going there like that. So this is a great system and you, it's just like a drawer and then you can put your slides inside, many slides together and then you can start ablating, yeah? Uh, and then here you can see the uh, image and also in this screen also you can see the similar image and you can locate all those things and start ablating. And then here you have uh, argon coming, a uh, sweeping gas and pass through the ablated sample into the plasma located, ICP mass spectrometer located there through the nebulizer, yeah. And um, so here is the close-up look at this is about to have uh, ablation. Um, my students label this is the bottom and top of that to figure it out uh, and mounted on a glass because we, we will see that uh, we need to identify where the, uh, the, the, this uh, specimen coming from. And then you have the laser going through this. And then uh, you can see this cartoon uh, little thing. You have a 213 laser. Uh, you get an ablation. 
and you get a less set of particles. These are very aerosolic uh, nanoparticle size, microparticle size, and then it's swept through argon gas through a tube uh, to the plasma excitation source. Okay. <laughs>